This video is sponsored by PDF Expert. Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And when I reviewed the M1 MacBook Air, I told you it was the best laptop for your money, but for $300 more, or in this case, $500 more for the most powerful MacBook Pro, is the MacBook Pro worth the upgrade price for the most demanding users, or is the fan just blowing hot air? I mean, it's a fan, so blowing hot air is its jobs. Okay, you know what I meant. So like I just said, this is the most powerful version of the M1 MacBook Pro. And what I mean by the most powerful is that it has the M1 chip equipped with 16 gigabytes of memory. So when we get to the performance section in this video, I'm going to talk about whether or not I think that specific upgrade is worth the money. But for now, let's get back to the basics. Much like the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro design is completely unchanged from the previous 2020 Intel iteration. It still has the same slim design, it still comes in silver or space gray, it still has the much improved Magic Keyboard with its better typing experience and much more reliable keys. And for better or worse, it still has a touch bar. And it also still has the Touch ID fingerprint sensor in the top right of the keyboard for logging in and autofilling passwords. And it just has two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports, which offer the same exact data transfer speeds as Thunderbolt 3 ports. And if you want an M1 chip, you can't upgrade to the four port Thunderbolt model as those are still running on Intel processors. Having just two Thunderbolt ports on what Apple calls a pro laptop is a bit of a letdown and I find it can be a little bit annoying. For example, I recently had to import some footage for a recent video and I couldn't get my Thunderbolt 3 hard drive to be recognized through the adapter I use. Normally I just plug the Thunderbolt drive in on the other side of my 16 inch laptop that one has four ports, but this time I had to unplug the adapter and then plug in directly to the MacBook Pro to get it to recognize this drive. It's not a deal breaker and you'll suffer these same issues on the lower end MacBook Air, but it's a little more annoying and you might run into similar issues with the lack of ports on these devices. Other than that, I do recommend getting some sort of an adapter as normally it works just fine and you get a lot of the ports you would normally use on this device like an SD card, micro SD card, USB-A, and HDMI ports. The MacBook Pro screen is also unchanged. It still has the P3 wide color gamut, it still has a retina resolution, and it offers 100 nits more brightness than the MacBook Air. It's always nice to have a brighter display, but I rarely take advantage of those extra nits. But if you work in brighter environments, it's something you might want to consider. Another consideration to pull you away from the air is the slightly better speakers that get louder and have less distortion at higher volumes and offer a wider and bigger soundstage for more immersive sound. They're really good for laptop speakers in a 13 inch size, but it's still not as groundbreaking as the 16 inch MacBook Pro speakers. Those are the best laptop speakers I have ever heard. And for me, this 13 inch still doesn't come close. Okay, so the same display, same ports, same speakers, same. What's different with this model besides the M1 chip? Well, there are actually two differences. Firstly, the microphone in this model is what Apple calls their studio quality microphones. Those debuted on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. They actually sound pretty good for inbuilt laptop microphones and offer a clear difference between that of the MacBook Air. Secondly, while there's no new camera hardware, Apple did its best through software to make their 720p webcam better. Apple kind of pulled this off as the webcam is better on skin tones and exposure, but at the end of the day, it's still a 720p webcam, which YouTube doesn't even define as HD anymore. In a world where your iPhone's front-facing camera can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second, even with these slight improvements to the MacBook Pro's webcam, it's still a bit of a disappointment, but I think it's fine for video calls as long as you have adequate lighting. Okay, this is a test of the MacBook Pro studio quality microphones. I'm also recording the video on the MacBook Pro webcam so we can get an idea of how the webcam looks and how those studio quality microphones sound. So hopefully it's good. All right, so nothing I mentioned above should really sway you because almost 
everything, with the exception of the camera and the microphone, are the same on this new M1 MacBook Pro. The real difference with it is just like the Air, and that is with the M1 processor. Now, of course, the Pro can handle basic tasks with ease. So apps like web browsing, video calling, word processing, email spreadsheets, keynote presentations, note taking, and of course, it can handle viewing and editing PDFs from our sponsor, PDF Expert. Wait, did I just mention a sponsor? This video is sponsored by PDF Expert. PDF Expert is an amazing, fast, and responsive PDF viewer and editor with fast text rendering, smooth reading, and ultra fast scrolling. And it's even featured as an editor's choice in the Mac App Store and has been awarded App of the Year. PDF Expert has a great and intuitive design, but PDF Expert does much more than letting you view PDFs in a beautifully designed app. It also allows you to use full text search to find keywords or important information in long PDF files, as well as manage multiple PDFs by merging them together without even opening them. And PDF Expert has an easy to use file size reduction tool, allowing you to save precious space on your drive. PDF Expert also allows you to annotate PDFs with ease and allows you to highlight, note, and instruct with just one click, as well as sign contracts, fill out forms, and add your own text with the text tool. You can even easily insert your own images, link to websites, or redact private sensitive information with ease. All of this at a lower price point than Adobe Acrobat Pro. And PDF Expert works great even on these new M1 Macs. And best of all, you can try it for yourself with a seven day free trial. To get started today, just check out the link in the description. And thank you so much to PDF Expert for sponsoring this video. Now, yes, the Pro handles pretty much all of those tasks and even tasks running through the Rosetta 2 translation layer like a champ, just as good as the MacBook Air did. And in those basic tasks, I couldn't really notice a difference between the Pro and the Air. However, unlike the Air, the MacBook Pro has an active cooling system, or basically a fan that can cool the processor so it can sustain performance for even longer. But does that actually make a difference? Well, in my testing, I found that the 13-inch MacBook Pro outscored the Air in tasks that required longer processing time. So in an intensive CPU benchmark like Cinebench, you can see that the Pro outscored the Air even though they're both using the same M1 processor. That's all thanks to the active cooling. The same can be said for the 10-minute 4K video export that I have been running on all of these new M1 machines. The M1 MacBook Pro was able to export about twice as fast as the M1 MacBook Air, exporting a 4K ProRes video in three minutes and 12 seconds, while the Air took six minutes and 11 seconds. Again, both of those laptops have the same M1 processor, and the only difference is because the MacBook Pro is able to sustain higher processor clock speeds for longer periods of time than the Air and doesn't throttle down as much to cool that processor off. The Air doesn't have a fan, so the only way it can cool the processor is to throttle down. Now, if you thought the results of that export time were drastic when you compare it against the Air, the results are even more drastic when you compare it against the previous Intel 13-inch MacBook Pro. That took 11 minutes and 50 seconds to export that same 4K clip. That's about twice as slow as the MacBook Air and four times as slow as the new M1 MacBook Pro. The year-over-year -year jump in performance is just breathtaking. In fact, the M1 MacBook Pro outperformed the 16-inch MacBook Pro, which took 7 minutes and 15 seconds to export that 4K file. So the MacBook Air is fast at exporting, but the M1 MacBook Pro is crazy fast. Now, while editing in Final Cut Pro 10, I found that when both machines had 8 gigabytes of memory, they both handled my 4K 10-bit videos on the timeline very similarly. Both were incredibly smooth until I got to projects that were longer than 10 minutes with multiple streams of 4K. That would send both of my 8 gigabyte machines, whether it was the Air or the Pro, searching to swap memory and sometimes show you that beach ball we all know and despise. 
Now, that didn't mean I couldn't work in projects that were longer than 10 minutes. It's just that's when I started to notice slowdowns in my workflow due to the machine slowing down due to a lack of memory. Now, I specifically said that we would be exploring the 16 gigabyte version of this machine for this review. And I have to say, the extra eight gigabytes of memory made all the difference when it came to my longer timelines, and it basically handled everything I threw at this machine like a champ. So even though the eight gigabyte machines still perform pretty well for what they are, and for most people, they'll probably be fine, if you work with a lot of apps open at once, or you edit 4K videos like I do that are longer than 10 minutes, or you have multiple tracks of music or, or so on, the extra eight gigabytes of memory is well worth the $200 upgrade. Now let's get back to that active cooling system because I think a lot of longtime MacBook users have fears of the fan spinning up and getting really loud. And I specifically wanted to address that even though the Pro does have a fan, you will almost never hear it even after exporting videos or running intensive benchmarks, the only time I could hear the fan was when I physically put my ear up against the machine. There was one time where I was rendering a large batch of videos and hooked it up to my external 5K display, and that's the only time I actually registered fan sounds coming out of this machine for just a few seconds, seriously. This thing is quiet. In most cases, it's just as quiet as the fanless MacBook Air. And just like the Air, the Pro never got hot in the weeks that I've been using it. That means that unlike my previous reviews of the 13 inch MacBook Pro, where I said it could be really uncomfortable to use on your lap, that's no longer a problem. I've even edited entire videos with the MacBook Pro on my lap and still couldn't get this thing to heat up. It is just really great. Speaking of editing on my lap, I'm also able to do that now, even away from a power source. That's because of the amazing battery life on this machine, which Apple rates at over 20 hours of battery life when watching offline video. Just like with my Air review, it's kind of hard to even test these battery life claims on any of these machines. And both the Air and the Pro offer tremendous battery life that will last for days. And on heavy days, I could edit an entire video and still use my laptop for web browsing, watching a video, going through all my emails, and I would still get through an entire day all without having to reach for the power cord. That's just something you could never do on previous Intel MacBook Pros, especially when using those demanding apps like Final Cut Pro 10. That would just absolutely drain the battery life. Now, even though the Pro has slightly better battery life, I really wouldn't pick the Pro over the Air for that slightly higher rating, as I found them both to be very similar, even if I couldn't give them an exact hour and minute rating. That's to say that both of those laptops just have really good battery life. So is the MacBook Pro worth it when it's so similar to the cheaper MacBook Air and using the same processor? Well, yes, it is, but only if you need that maximum sustained performance, which quite frankly, most people don't. If you are using it for heavier tasks though, things like coding, development, video editing, music production, 3D modeling, or whatever programs can take advantage of the M1 CPUs running at max performance for longer, then that extra $300 can lead to some time-saving benefits. And while there are shortcomings for this device being a pro machine, it's also one that I plan on switching to full time to run this channel. In fact, I made an entire video on why I'm going to be switching away from my 16 inch MacBook Pro to this new M1 MacBook Pro, and I'll leave that up here if you wanna watch it. So yeah, the 13 inch MacBook Pro is the fastest MacBook you can get right now, and it's worth it for those that need the best performance possible. All right, everyone, hopefully this video helped you out in deciding if the 13 inch MacBook Pro is right for you. If it did, please leave me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, well, make sure you're subscribed. Also, be sure to let me know what you think of the new M1 MacBook Pro in the comments below. And don't forget to check out our sponsor for this video, PDF Expert. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.